everyone, welcome to the FLL Gummy Bears channel. I'm Mia, the Inclusion Bear, and I'm also part of the FRC Team Mechanical Advantage 6328. In this video, I'll discuss a few of the practical navigation techniques my team has explored in past FLL seasons. Those techniques have helped us achieve robust and accurate autonomous navigations in our competitions. Hopefully, they can also benefit you and address some of the challenges your team has been facing now. So what is autonomous navigation and why is it so important for the FLL game? Well, navigation is all about how the robot travels on the game field. And as you know, the biggest challenge for FLL is the autonomous drive. In this two and a half minute time frame, your robot needs to quickly drive to different mission models and finish the desired tasks all by itself. There are many factors the robot always needs to keep in mind. Where it is at every location, which mission model it needs to stop by, which path it should take to get there, and how to arrive there reliably and consistently. Everyone wishes their robot has a perfect navigation that is fast, accurate, and reliable. But alas, every step can trigger an error, and as the errors accumulate, the chance of the task finishing, just as expected, is extremely low. There are various types of navigation techniques that can be used in the FLL robot game through the combinations of sensor and motor controls. Basic techniques consist of skills that the robot uses to simply move around, such as using motors to drive straight or make turns. They also include basic color and wall alignments to adjust the direction the robot is heading during the game. Meanwhile, advanced techniques are enhanced versions of these skills that not only allow the robot to move around, but also ensure better consistency and efficiency in such movements. These help save time as well as make the robot's performance more robust. However, they are more complex and require more time to experiment with, perfect, and implement. The methods we discuss here are mainly a summary of many detailed experiments, discoveries, and implementations. EV3 robots are used here for related demos. However, the ideas behind can be applied to both EV3 and Spike Prime robots. Before we start discussing these advanced techniques, I want to highlight the importance of data logging for autonomous navigation. Data logging is a great way to record robot sensor measurements, such as the gyro or yaw angle, motor speed, and color sensor readings. The file with the data can be imported onto a spreadsheet where you can analyze it to find out useful information such as how the program works or how a sensor behaves and gain insights to debug and improve your solutions. In FLL Autonomous Navigation, it is crucial for the robot to locate itself while moving on the game mat as accurately as it can. Vector navigation can be used as a basic technique to achieve this global localization. The idea is quite straightforward. The robot's starting position and heading direction define a vector map for the game field, where each location has unique x, y values and a 2D map. By consistently monitoring the sensor readings from the gyro sensor and motor encoder, you can find the robot heading direction and distance traveled at any time, which makes deciding the target direction and distance needed for the next stop much more accurate and adaptive. To do this, you need to make sure your robot can move straight and turn as accurate as it can, as shown in the example on the top right. You can always use landmarks on the game mat, such as black and white lines, the table wall, or even mission models to align the robot and update your location information. A lot of times, the robot applies its gyro sensor to help it turn. However, the gyro sensor is the most faulty part of an FLL robot because it always causes gyro lag and sometimes a terrible gyro drift, which is when the robot starts turning nonstop in one direction. As a result, the robot never turns as we desire. How can we improve this in the FLL game? Well, we developed a two-stage gyro turn method to help the robot change direction more reliably and consistently. The idea is quite straightforward. First, it makes the course turn with normal power, then makes a fine turn back slowly to adjust to the target angle. As you can see in the example, the basic gyro turn of 90 degrees is way off, while the two-stage gyro turn is very accurate. Please note that before the fine correction, the robot needs to wait a small time interval, normally around 0.2 seconds, to minimize the gyro lag impact from initial course turn. The next topic is about motion profiling, which is related to how you start or stop your robot for navigations. With basic navigation, the robot starts and stops abruptly when it moves. This often leads to disturbances in both heading directions and distance, and makes navigation, especially with a high speed, extremely prone to error, as you can see shown in the top right animation. Trapezoidal speed, or power controls, start the robot at a lower speed, then gradually accelerates it to the target speed, then slowly reduces the speed to allow for a smoother ending. 
As shown in the bottom animation, it creates a much smoother and more accurate trip. When graphed, the speed takes the form of a trapezoid shape, as shown in the top left picture. You can also apply min or max speed controls to your motor for better performance. Did you know that we can apply basic math and simple geometry to solve very challenging problems in the FLL game? Well, in the 2021 Cargo Connect season, we faced the problem of parking a bulky robot as close as possible to the crane mission model, so it can extend its attachment to push the model forward for a certain distance. This proved to be a challenge for us, since the robot starts the parking with quite a few errors carried from previous navigations, and with a fixed turn angle and distance, it could easily get too close to the mission model and get stuck, or stray too far away from it and totally miss the target. We solved this issue by using a geometry-based auto-parking method with the help of signature lines nearby. The robot first performs color line squaring on the horizontal black line with its two color sensors, then turns 45 degrees towards the horizontal color line close to the crane, then moves diagonally until one color sensor detects the vertical black line. It records the distance traveled during this movement using the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the vertical and horizontal distance from the mission models. It adjusts the distance needed to further push the crane forward afterwards. From the animations, you can see that the robot completes this task very efficiently and consistently. Here, I'll give another example that we learned in the 2022 Super Powered Game, where our robot needed to adjust its heading on the black line before moving forward. Normally, when using the color line to adjust its heading, the robot needs to slow down as it approaches, stop, perform line squaring to make sure it's heading straight, then continue on its course. This stop, adjust, and go process is quite time consuming and can take several seconds to complete. However, non-stop heading adjustment allows the robot to dynamically adjust its heading while moving. It does this by measuring the time difference when each of the color sensors detects the line, then translate it into a distance using the speed and time factors. Now it can construct a corresponding right triangle to solve the heading angles of the incoming robot using trigonometry, and keeps adjusting it to move straight. We successfully applied this idea during the game, as shown in the animation. PID control is another topic that has been widely discussed in the FLL games for better navigation performance, where you can apply corrections based on proportional errors, accumulated errors, or error rate of change to ensure the robot can always go straight. However, oftentimes we design a very bulky attachment to complete multiple missions, and when a robot is navigating with such a heavy attachment like the one shown in the top right, it tends to be pulled to one direction. In this situation, PID is not sufficient to maintain movement in a straight line. What we found is that feed forward allows for a predefined steering correction, which effectively balances the initial trends imposed from its bulky attachment and helps the robot go straight. Now I want to introduce another topic on time efficient navigation for complex routes. Usually if the mission target requires complex navigations, the robot will take a step-by-step -step approach where you break the navigation route into sections of straight lines and the robot moves straight, stops, makes a turn, then goes to the next stop. This so-called stop-turn-go approach is reliable, but very time-consuming, especially if you have to stop multiple times to adjust the robot position. A continuous path navigation is where the robot moves smoothly along a single path in one consecutive motion, without stopping. This allows the robot to save any time wasted from pausing or making small adjustment turns. Combined with PID, the continuous path navigation proves to be an extremely robust and fast navigation technique though coding the robot to do so is quite tricky. Here is one method we explored to make the continuous path navigation work. It was done with simple machine learning. First, you use your hand to move the robot along the desired path, mimicking the route you wanted to take during the robot game. You are logging data from this the entire time, with current gyro angle and distance as the logged factors. Next, take the data and make a graph out of it on Google Sheets. This will allow you to generate a really long equation for the graph of the robot's movements you just made. Then add the equation into your code and test it out on your robot. Before I conclude this navigation discussion, I want to emphasize that jigs and wall guides are easy yet powerful techniques that can greatly simplify a very complex navigation and make your solution more consistent. You can design jigs to fix your robot's launch position at an arbitrary direction with either a triangular or square frame. You can use funnel-shaped jigs to align robots directly onto a mission model, and you can also apply a wall guide with wheels that run on the wall to maintain a constant distance from the wall. 
I hope this brief summary can give you better ideas on how to make your robot's navigation more reliable, efficient, and consistent. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us using the information linked in our bio. Thanks for watching.